Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Most High. You alone are the Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, the gate shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call to, to you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you. Though you do not know me, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Beside me there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I am the Lord. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Please stand as we continue. And let's say Psalm 96 responsibly by half verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the world. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. And his wonders among all people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the people of the 
Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let all the thunder, let the, let the seas thunder all that is in it. Let the field be joyful, and all that is there is. Then shall all the trees and shout and wood shout for the joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness. And the people will sit in truth. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our epistle reading today comes from the first letter to the Church of the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all, for all of you and, the, and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brother and sister, beloved by God, that he has chosen you uh, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you become imitators of us and, the, and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of these regions about report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom we pray whom he raised from the dead Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming the word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you did not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the test. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? And they answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who 
gives us minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. Amen. Please be seated. What a great blessing it is to be with you this morning, even though we have to be masked and socially distanced. When we gather in our church buildings, we are reminded of the ways in which we, and the main way in which we are the body of Christ, through word and through sacrament. And I hope this uh, time that you've been gathering together since around June, some uh, in person, uh, you've found uh, grace and hope in that gathering. This is one of the few, very few uh, gatherings that I've begun being a part of in some of our smaller parishes, and we're live streaming this morning so that parishes around our diocese can be a part. You're their brothers and sisters, and they can be a part of seeing this uh, beautiful church of, here in Folly Mills. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Now this lesson often gets used to discuss making a parish pledge, because it comes right in pledge season, and most rectors uh, take up uh, that opportunity to uh, have you think about your pledge to the parish. So you can still think about that, but uh, this year I'll take a little bit different tact on that because we are facing record unemployment in the midst of a pandemic and in the midst of a bitterly divisive election season. So we might ask this morning, what can Jesus' teaching be calling us as baptized disciples into this morning? You know, Jesus is always in his teachings and his parables, pushing us to a deeper level, asking us to think about our spiritual lives, taking stock of our discipleship in his name. Now, Jesus' Jesus's response to the Pharisees' question this morning is at first glance a sort of clever maneuver to avoid the trap that the Pharisees are setting for him. But a closer look challenges us as it would of those who initially heard it to consider who it is that we truly belong to and what the implications for that belonging are. And how does Jesus address the nature of our belonging? Well, in this moment, he does it using money. Now, this episode in Matthew's Gospel is not about the separation of church and state, as some like to make it into, and it's not merely just about money. And yet money and the deep feelings that we all have around it is the means that the Pharisees use to try to trick Jesus. And this alone is significant. Now, a few details about the money in question this episode. First, the coin, the denarius, used here is a Roman coin. And the volatile issue was the head tax of the Roman census. The Jewish people not only resented the tax, we all resent taxes to some degree, but they consider the required coin to be blasphemous. Not only did the required coin carry the image of Caesar, the Latin inscription read, Tiberius Caesar, August son of the divine Augustus, high priest. You can imagine their feelings about it. Second, and more significantly, it is no small detail that Jesus is not in possession of this coin, right? He asked for someone else to produce it. He doesn't have any of them in his pockets. Jesus says, show me the coin used for the tax. And who produces the coin? Who produces the coin? It's the Pharisees, men, who produce this idolatrous coin, and they do so right there in the temple. So the trap is already sprung. See, Jesus is not complicit with this currency because he is the very image of God. The Roman coin is stamped with the image of Caesar. And Jesus is undivided in his loyalty to God. You and I, on the other hand, are often divided in our loyalties, if we're honest. And Jesus knows this. And so, besides providing a clever and elusive response to the Pharisees' question, Jesus' open response this morning is one that forces a reflection on our loyalties 
on our priorities. Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. So it is that money, paper bills, metal coins, credit cards in our day mostly, is currency. And currency is defined as something that is in circulation as a means of exchange. Something that is in circulation as a means of exchange. So where are we putting the currency that comes from the work of our lives? What exchanges are we making and what values do they point to? Now many in the church would prefer to separate the realities of money from their religious lives or their spirituality. But such separation, however, is not possible, really, nor should it even be desired. Trying to separate money from our spiritual lives is just simply a game. Our identities cannot be neatly separated from the things that we spend our money on. You see, we do, in fact, create identities, right? by bartering our currency for things. The world invites us to buy lifestyles. Can't get on your phone without some kind of ad or turn on the TV. And so we choose clothes, gadgets, cars, houses, so many other goods and services. And all these things say at least something about who we are. How we use our currency says something about who we are and what we value. And this is unavoidable, and not all of it's bad. We prioritize our values with our spending choices. And so it is that we stamp ourselves with the images of the world. Now, the deeper part of Jesus' question for us is not about what we are doing with our actual money, but rather who and what we are becoming in all of our exchanges. Who do we belong to? Who do you belong to? The truth is that each of us in our baptisms are stamped with the image of God. We do not belong to the empire. When we baptize in the church, the sign of the cross is traced on the foreheads of new Christians with holy oil and the words, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever, forever. You see, as the baptized, we are God's currency in the world. Currency, remember, is something that is in circulation as a means of exchange. We The baptized are God's means of exchange in the world. And Jesus calls us to be in circulation in this world that God has created, good and full of abundance. And so this process of our circulation is one of converting the emperor's coin into investments which increase the stock of the gospel mission of Jesus Christ. Instead of just pumping that currency back into the insatiable maw of the culture. In these challenging times of division, rancor, and social upheaval, we remember that one of our baptismal promises is to strive for justice and peace among all people as we work to respect the dignity of every human being. Every human being. God has made an investment in each one of us through the resurrection in Christ Jesus. We are literally the stewards of God's investment, God's investment of grace and mercy. And so wherever we circulate in the world, in the social, economic, political, and religious realm, we belong first to Christ and his gospel. In the face of so much judgment and hatred, we, the baptized, must be about circulating Jesus' grace and love. For God's sake and for the world. Give, therefore, to the emperor 
the things that are the emperor's, and to God, the things that are God's. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Standing or kneeling, as is your custom. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body and mind and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that, you, that your will for them may be fulfilled. We may 
and we pray that we may share with all your saints in the eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocese and the Anglican community, we pray for the bishop's visit to Good Shepherd Falling Mills, pray for the people of Good Shepherd Falling Mills, the people of the Diocese of Haiti as they search for their new bishop, the Diocese of Leeds, and their bishop, the Right Reverend Nick Baines. In our own church community, we pray for Emerson Hart, Howard and June Ratcliffe, Hugh and Colleen Cuddes, Jillian Taylor, Diane, Danny Morgan, Royce, Cooper, Barbara Strutz, City Acres, Garland Manuel, Patricia Childress, Jim, Anna Taylor, and thanks for a positive medical report, and the repose of the soul of Forrester Taylor. We pray for those who teach and for all who learn, for those who work to better our health, for all who work for the public safety and security, for persecuted Christians, for all who suffer from addiction, for those who feel loss, for those who we name silently now. All of these are dear to you, Heavenly Father, keep them safe, and may they be granted soundness of health in their body and mind and spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people, and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. again to be with you and I welcome all those who might be joining us online. As I said earlier, they can uh, be with us uh, gathered even if they are in there uh, wherever they are tuning in online. And we're glad to, it reminds us that we are all one big diocesan family. Are there some announcements? Yes. Uh, Doug? Yes. Well, thank you for being here today with Mark. And behind the scenes, Mark Furlow at the camera. Thank you all for being here and, and being with us today. It's, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, Bishop Mark will give instructions for the Eucharist in a moment. Just wanted to give some local announcements. First of all, uh, I think the word is getting around, if not already, that Forrester Taylor um, passed away uh, peacefully the other night. And his service will be on Tuesday at 2 p.m at Tankling Springs Presbyterian Church. I believe it's an outdoor graveside service. Okay. And October is our annual warm wearing gathering. A nice collection is already starting in the parish house of warm wear. 
look in your closet for things that don't fit that are warm and maybe a blanket or two and bring those and they'll be given to the Valley Mission. And Trump or Treat is this Saturday in the parking lot for kids in the church especially. And it's at five o'clock. Please notice that announcement, uh, particularly about uh, bringing only store packaged uh, goodies for the kids, wearing a mask and all that you see there. If you want to decorate your trunk and pass out treats, uh, please be set up by 4.45. So in just a few minutes, we will uh, celebrate Holy Eucharist, and those who are joining us online uh, will join in the Holy Eucharist. And as we celebrate and receive here, uh, they can remember again that they are part of this larger celebration. And if you are joining us online, there will be a slide on the screen where you may join into spiritual communion, uh, letting Jesus know in your heart and your uh, soul uh, your desire to receive. Um, after... Um, um, our prayer of uh, Thanksgiving. I'll walk down here and stand um, here and you all can walk up socially distance and receive the bread and then a return to your seat and then you can um, then take the bread. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Holy Eucharist continues with the Great Thanksgiving on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week 
overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. To he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the feast. Hallelujah. Taste and see that God is good. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. My Lord and my God.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 On 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, 
You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forever. Amen. Let us rise for our parting hymn, and you're invited to come along. Thank you.